Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the 13th video of our newly created technical series called ServiceNow Developer. So in my last video, we have understood a very, very important concept of ServiceNow development, which is the script include. And I have explained to you what is script include, why it is important, how it works, and also different types of script include, right? And lastly, I have also shown that how you can, you know, create a script include, how the script include form looks like, and also what are the different fields and how they work, right? So make sure you watch the last video because this is the continuation of the last video. So if you miss that video, it would be difficult for you to understand. So don't worry, the link will be there in the description and also you can find the link here on your screen, okay? So now in today's video, like I said, this is the continuation of the last video. So we have discussed three different types of script includes, right? Uh, that you can create. First one is the classless and the uh, or the on-demand. And next one, so where we will use script include by defining a new class. And the last one is the where we are extending an existing class. So I have told you about each and every type in maybe single one or two lines. Okay, because my plan was to create separate videos for each type of script include. Right. So here we are. This is the first type we are discussing today. That is the on demand and classless script include. So let's go with me, understand how it works very quickly. What are the important points? And then I will go to my PDI and I will work on a live use case so that again, the concept gets clear, right? I told you all of this concept that we are going to learn in this throughout this series for uh, the certified application developer or the CAD examination, we are going to implement it through use cases. Again, I'm telling until unless you do hands on in your PDI with different use cases, you won't become a confident developer. This use case will give you confidence and boost your uh, performance, right? Make sure you watch the full video to see how the classless script include is working. Okay. So on demand and classless script include. So by the name you understand classless means there is no class here, right? So absolutely true. It's just a single function. So you can see it contains one function. So you declare the function in script include, then you are calling it from any server, uh, server side scripting. Now, the important thing is that the second point, you can see the name of the function, whichever the function that you are going to create in script include, that has to be same with the script include name. And we'll see that when we'll do the use case, right? Can be called from any server side scripting. Like I said, you declare it, then you call the function from any server side scripting. Remember that it cannot be called from client side. So you can only call it from server side. Okay. In the next type, when we will see the defining a new class script include. So there we would be able to call it from both the server and the client. And also we would be able to create multiple function, not only one function. So on demand script include contains one function. The name of the function and the script include name has to be same. Can be called for any from any server side scripting area and it cannot be called from client side. Okay, so now very importantly, let's see what is the use case. Okay, so use case time. So when you update incident work notes, then it should also update the same work notes for the associate problem record. Now, if you are following my videos, so in my three use case of business rule video, I have discussed this use case already and I have shown you how you can implement this with the help of business rule. Now, here is a challenge. Now we are going to do the same thing, but we will use script include, right? And we will see how we can pass the value in the script include, how script include does the work, right? With the combination of business rule. Okay, so it would be very, very interesting. Again, so make sure you watch the full video. So let's go to my PDI and let's do this use case. All right, so I'm in my ServiceNow developer instance. So very quickly, I will show the incident, maybe incident, uh, I'll go to the incident list. I think I'm, again, I'm gonna show you that how it will work. Uh, again, if you watch my uh, three business case video, then there also I've explained it. And, uh, and have shown you how with the help of business rule, you can do that. So if you miss that video, you can go and watch it out. Also, you can practice it in your PDI. So now here, uh, let me see, there is no problem record. So I'm going to add a problem record here. So maybe 109. Okay. So now let me save this ticket. All right. So what is the condition now? Let me open the problem record. 
also so these are associate problem record right so the use case is whenever i'm gonna type a walk notes here in the incident then then the same walk notes whatever I'm, so whatever i'm going to write the same walk notes will update in the problem record right so if i type something like test for an example and post it you can see it is posted here but of course right now we have not implemented so the result would be posted here as a walk notes right so let's see how we can do that so first i will go to the script include and this is the first time i'm going to create a script include guys like i said in my last video we have explained and understood how script include works different types and all those things now we are going to do it practically so i'll search for script include okay so i'm going to click on new now the first very important thing of the classless script include that the name of the script include has to be same with the function so first let me declare the function so now what we are going to do is here so now before i write the script include let me quickly tell you what we are going to do so we have this field in the incident table right this problem id this is a problem id name of the field you can see so this is the field value that i have to pass in the script include because in the script include i'm going to do the glide record with the problem table so i'll write a function that will uh, do the glide record on the problem table and i will look for that particular problem where the problem number is this because in that problem only we have to update the work notes right that part i'll do in script include now also i need to update the work notes again the work notes i need to take from here from the work notes here right and then i have to update it in the problem record so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create a business rule and from business rule i'm going to pass the value of this field problem id and also whatever i'm going to write in the work notes both the value i will pass when i will call the script include and then here in the script include it will take as a parameter and then do the job so let's see how we can do that so let's see what we can take the name here so get uh, okay update work notes maybe update work notes that's the name of my script include now when i press tab you can see i have shown you that automatically the api name comes and also the script comes now you can see in the script we have this class dot create so it's the class defining a class type script include that by default comes okay but we are discussing about the class list so we don't need that so i can directly remove it from here and i'm gonna start writing a function again in the classless script include you can define only single function if you want to define multiple functions then we have to use class based script include that we will learn in the next video so i will name it as again i need to copy this because it has to be same okay now here i'm going to accept two parameters first i'm going to accept the problem id uh, so i will take as like problem i'm gonna take problem uh like problem and then another and the work notes i will take as work notes okay so these are the two parameters okay so from business rule when i'll call the method i will pass this value but here what i'm going to do is that i'm going to do a glide record so where gr equal to new glide record okay and i'm going to do it in the problem table all right now gr dot add query and you know what i'm going to do so i want the value of sys id field so sys id has to be the same so this is i'm querying in the problem table so the sys id has to be the same as the problem id and the problem id i will pass it from the uh, business rule right so maybe i'm gonna name it as uh, problem id in this way i and d in capital so the sys id would be same as problem id then only would be able to find the record right where we need to update the work notes so gr dot query and now if gr dot next if the record found then gr dot work notes okay now here i will put work notes so the again the work notes from the incident table will come from the business rule so i'll just pass this value to the work notes and also i'm going to do gr.update so that the record gets updated with the work notes right i'm going to save this that's my script include so now i need to call the script include because i need to pass this value otherwise this script include won't work right so i will again copy the name of the script include and now i'm going to write a business rule 
so i will just configure business rule and we are going to apply it on the incident table you know the reason right because the problem id field is present in the incident table and the work notes is also present so maybe i'm gonna do it as uh, maybe pass information like that okay the name of the business rule i'll make it advanced uh, it will be after i will update the work notes so the condition would be work notes changes whenever the work notes changes in the advanced tab it will work so first now here i need to call the journal field to get the work notes value so here what i'm going to do is that i'm going to write as work notes like that equal to current dot work notes then dot get journal entry right you remember now here i will put minus one to get the last update now i will call the script include right so simply i will write the name of the script include or the function name it's same right and here i'm gonna pass the two parameters first it requires the problem id so i'm gonna pass like current dot problem id okay this is the first and the second is the work notes that's it so it will pass the problem id sys id of the problem and also the work notes it will go here uh, go here it will put in the problem record then update the record and we'll be able to see that's it so that's it i'm gonna save the business rule all right i hope it clears so now i'm gonna open any incident uh, let's see if we have a problem record attached to it we don't so let's attach so 109 so i'm gonna save it i think 109 is already open so i'll make it close to each other and now here i'm gonna write something in the work notes so let's write something hey are you getting it something like that so i'm gonna post it here and now if i go in the problem record you can see the work notes is coming as hey are you getting it right isn't it cool so we have done the same thing but with the help of the script include this time okay now one more thing i have shown you on the also in the last video so now for an example if i write another work notes here in the incident maybe this is second one something like that i want to show you something if i post it if i go to the problem record you see it is coming as a whole work notes like right so it is updating the time and but it is coming as whole but i want it should be like this as a separated activities right so for that all i need to do is that i need to change the entry to minus one to one and you will see here okay so now if i add this is third one like this and post it now you see it post as a separate record okay let's do another one to show you this is the fourth one and if i go here you can see it is coming as as a separate activities right okay so based on your choice you can do it but i hope it's understandable that how it works just a quick info now if i go to the business rule you can see our business rule is quite clear right we don't have a lot of stuff here because when we will deal with the defining a class script include there we can create multiple function that we will see again in the use case of next video so in that case if we want to make the same thing inside of the business rule then it would become very very difficult it would become a mess so it's always good to use script include and not only from business rule you can call the function actually you can call from other scripting area you can call from ui action any server side scripting area that is also a benefit right you can reuse the code okay and also script include doesn't you know run automatically when you refresh a page or do something because there is no trigger condition so until unless you call it from other scripting place it won't work so it's not it's not going to make your system slow right that's why script include is so popular so again if you like the video hit the like button if you have any question come to the comment section so don't forget to share this video with your friends and family so that it can reach out to many people and also don't forget to subscribe my channel and follow me on instagram from technical tip for technical tips and the reels that's going to come very soon okay so bye bye see you in my next video take care